Hello everyone. Well, we are here at the Natureplex in Millbrook, Alabama, and this is our live naturalist chat. Thanks for joining us today. And we are going to hang out with box turtles today. But before we do that, I want to talk to you all about this contest that we have going on. So hopefully you've seen it on Facebook. Uh, today is your last day to enter the contest. And to enter the contest, all you have to do is like both the Alabama Nature Center page, Alabama Nature Center and Natureplex, and then go to the Alabama Wildlife Federation page and like that page as well. And on both pages, you should find a post that has this lovely gift basket on it. And the post that has the picture of this gift basket, if you'll put in the comments a picture of you out enjoying Alabama the outdoors, Put that picture on there and then have your friends go and vote by liking your picture okay and so at five o'clock today the picture with the most likes is going to be the winner if you've already entered with your video or your picture I'm sorry um, then make sure to tell your friends to go and like your picture so that you can be the winner so I'm going to show you the gift basket um, we have well one it's a very nice galvanized tin bucket we have a Alabama Nature Center coffee mug. We have things from both the Alabama Nature Center and the Alabama Wildlife Federation. And this is because the Alabama Wildlife Federation's 85th anniversary is this year. And so these are some 85th anniversary merchandise that you can't just go out and get. So this is kind of a limited edition thing. So we have another coffee mug that's AWF. We have, this is a cool phone charger. And so it sits up like this um, to charge your phone. And it has the 85th anniversary logo on it. We also have one of these that sticks onto your phone, holds your, um, your cards and things like that. And we have a AWF hat. We have a stuffy from the gift shop, the Bear Dane gift shop, a little black bear. We also have some Lanark honey in here, and this is the honey that was just harvested by our bee camp just a few weeks ago. So this is really fresh honey. It's honey that was produced by our bees here at Lanark, and we don't have this in the gift shop right now. The gift shop is closed, so if you're wanting Lanark honey, this is like your only opportunity to get it right now. So this is definitely a limited edition sort of thing and we also have some beautiful note cards and these have a beautiful dragonfly picture this is from the clean water partnership and so this is some beautiful artwork so those are note note cards and then we have these books and so this is the mammals of Alabama book all the mammals that you can find here in Alabama that's a pretty thick book this is a really nice book that um, AWF had a part in, in sponsoring this book and so that's something really a really valuable book full of great information about some of the wildlife in Alabama and then this is a beautiful book to put on your coffee table um, and also to read through Black Belt Bounty it has some really gorgeous um, photographs in it lots of information about the Black Belt of Alabama and so uh, this is a really nice, beautiful leather bound book. And so this is the entire gift basket. So if you're wanting to win this basket, um, then you can go and enter your photograph and recruit all your friends too, to go to the page, find your picture and vote for it. And at five o'clock today, we're gonna announce the winner to win this, all right? so. Now we're going to talk about box turtles. So if you'll come with me, we have our friends right over here. And we move them over here. They're not so happy. They're all trying to escape. Um, and then they're moving, uh, they're, they're, we move them over here just because their habitat, which we'll show you in a minute, was in the full sun. And they were all enjoying hiding under logs and stuff, which was not very conducive to us being able to hang out with them. So, I'm going to introduce you to our eastern box turtles. So, right here we have Tara, and her name means earth. And 
she is our largest female here. Great big dome shell, very characteristic of an eastern box turtle. And then we have, let's see, this is tripod. She is missing her little back foot, which is how she got her name. And also an eastern box turtle. These are all females. And this is <laughs> E.T. And she has a really unique shell. We think she was probably um, in a fire. Studies have shown that box turtles don't do a good job of escaping the fire. Um, but they can survive low intensity fires by going up into their shell. And so their shell is burned, but um, they can usually survive just a low intensity fire. This is Gaia also means earth. She doesn't have quite as big of a dome shell. She's a little younger than Tara. And then we have Danu. Also an earth name because these are earth turtles. So they like to, to be on land although they do really like to take a swim. Now I know some of some people say you can tell the males from the females by the color of their eyes. Well, Danu here, look at those red eyes. So she is actually a female. She just has some bright red eyes. So there's always exceptions to that rule. Um, the biggest way to tell male from the female is their plastron. So underneath this part of their shell on the bottom, if she were a male, it would have a dip in it. So all we have are females. She's got that nice domed top of her shell. So the top of the shell is called the carapace and the bottom of the shell is called the plastron. And I have one walking over my shoe here. All right, and so we're gonna see if we can get them to eat while we hang out with them. Now, box turtles eat just about anything. <laughs> they are, they'll eat um, in the wild, they'll eat different plants, they'll eat fruits, they'll eat fungi, insect, fish, and even carrion. But today we have them in captivity. They're being fed a nice diet of some romaine lettuce, some carrots, sweet potatoes, and squash. And then we have a protein that we're going to give them too. Let's see. And some of you might have seen the video of them all enjoying blackberries. That was a little treat they got. Hello. Look. They're not so sure about it. They're not in their usual home. And I do have some goodies. They're earthworms and stuff. We'll get that out a little later. They're very intent on trying to escape. So all of these were brought to us um, as previous pets. And so box turtles are taken out of the wild a lot by um, people wanting them as pets and hopefully you'll learn some information about them today that will make you think that that's a very bad idea to take them out of the wild and use have as, as pets and so I have this picture this picture is dated August 7th 1992 and that's our tripod right there and so that is, where'd she go? This turtle right here. So we are at least 28 years old. And that was, she was an adult in that picture and had already lost her foot somehow. And so that was 28 years ago that that picture was taken. So these guys have been known to live for 40 to 50 years. One individual was noted as living up to 100. Um, this is at least the one that I found when I was pulling them up on the internet. I'm sure there's been others. So they're a long-lived animal. So unless you're ready for that kind of responsibility, um, that's not going to be the best pet for you because I'm, that's living a very, very long time. A lot of people get tired of them and then go and dump them somewhere. And so the thing about box turtles is that they have a pretty small home range. So they 
like to live, they have a permanent home range. They usually like to stay in one general location. And so if you move box turtles around, um, even if you're trying to move them off the road and you're trying to move them to another place, it's generally not recommended you move them from where you found them because they're happiest where you found them. That's their home and they don't do well if they're moved too far away. Um, so once they've been moved, they can't be released into the wild. And so all of these are non-releasables because of that. But it's a big responsibility to take care of them. They have to have a nice diverse diet. So they get fed every day a variety of different fruits, vegetables. Um, we try to get some mushrooms for them. Uh, and then protein, and I'm going to show you what we feed them protein-wise here in a minute. Um, we found that these did not do well going throughout the winter inside. They, they don't live inside. So they live in their habitat right over here that we have built for them. So I'm going to give you a tour of that in a minute. Because they need to be outside. They need that natural sunlight. They like to live in the soil. So in the wild they would live um, in a nice, moist... Uh, forest and so that's you know they need the proper humidity and things like that and that's where they do best and so in the winter time we actually have put tons of leaf litter in there really deep about a foot deep and they um, were living up under there and that's where they uh, brumated for this winter so brumation is, is kind of the reptile form of hibernation. So they don't really build up a lot of fat reserves like a, a mammal would when they hibernate, but they do go and burrow down under the leaf litter and they slow their whole body down and they just stop moving, stop eating, stop drinking. And they might come up on a warm day. If it's nice and warm and sunny, they might try to go out and try to find something to eat. Um, but usually they just, their, their respiration lowers, their heart rate uh, slows down. Everything kind of slows down when they're in that state. And so that's a, what a lot of reptiles do to cope with the winter. So these are probably, of the animals that we have here at the Alabama Nature Center, these are some of the uh, more labor intensive as far as us caring for them because they do need this diverse diet. We have to consider the seasons for them. Um, they have this outdoor enclosure. They don't do well inside. And they need a lot of space to, to be able to roam and be happy. And you know, we go out there and we spray down their enclosure and make it nice and wet for them. And so try to replicate the conditions the best we can to what they would live they're out in the forest and all of these reasons are reasons why they don't make good pets another reason that you should think about is that these guys are uh, on the decline and so there's not many of them out in the wild like there once was and that's because of a couple of reasons: car strikes being one of them and also um, just people taking them out of the wild to keep as pets so when somebody tries to keep them as a pet, a lot of times they don't live as long just because of not being taken care of properly. Um, and then people get tired of them and they end up um, being dumped somewhere and not surviving well wherever they were dumped. They do like to swim and we can show you one swimming. Most of the time they spend on land and they do lay their eggs on land. They'll lay uh, four to seven eggs in a ca uh, hole that they'll dig in the ground and they'll have up to they'll nest um, a couple of times each year and once a female has mated she can continue to lay fertilized eggs for up to four years so that's crazy really crazy um, they each have very unique patterns on their shells, colors and patterns, and so that's how we can tell them apart. It's really cool to see different box turtles. Um, some of them have lots of red and orange on them. Like Danu here, she's got pretty orange or yellow on the side of her face. Um, Tara has this stripe coming down 
her back so we can tell them all apart and so you can tell yours apart if you see some that come and visit your yard you can tell them apart you know of when they're going to visit some people do things like paint their shells and that's that's really sad because if you paint their shells um you know it's it's you, one you don't know if what you're painting them with is toxic to them but also uh, if they're painted all bright colors it's hard for them to go and be camouflaged in the wild so they camouflage great with the leaf litter and so their shells are beautiful just the way they are and they don't need to be painted that's going to affect their survival so we have some protein we have some nice yummy juicy mealworms for them and let's see if we can get their attention they are not happy to have been moved out of their habitat. Oh, Tara, look, there's a mealworm. So usually once they get, they notice that there's mealworms, they get pretty happy. Oh, there you go. chomp and then we also have some earthworms and we showed you our little worm bin last week and this is the product of our worm bin decomposers um, decomposers are going to be dinner this week looky here and there these things are like little tanks let me tell you because um, they can go in and out of water. They can climb really well. They can go through a variety of different uh, substrates, you know, soil types. They're like the Jeep of the reptile world. Yum. Worm. It's what's for dinner. Tasty. And now Tara's coming over. You just walked right over it. They're starting to realize what's going on. No feeding time. Oh, she's just going to go over straight to the source. Check it out. If y'all have any questions about these guys, ask away. <laughs> She's got a feisty one. Oh, snooze you lose, Gaia. What do you think of the mealworms? There you go. And these guys will even look for for fish um, younger ones are known to to go getting little mosquito fish well, you're just gonna you're just gonna go right in there aren't you and take your pick it's like heaven all the superworms she can eat or all the mealworms she can eat all right, save some for the other ones. So, you know, as I said before, all of these were pets um, that people couldn't have anymore or didn't want anymore. So they're non-releasable. We don't know where they came from. It's been a very long time since they, wherever they were. And so that's why they're here at the Nature Center and we have the big responsibility of making sure that they are healthy and happy for as long as they live. And we use them to educate other people. Um, but they are not the best of pets because they do have a lot of special requirements and everything to make them really happy and healthy. And they take up the most time for us and 
they require a lot of space, even compared to a lot of the other animals that we have. Animals that are bigger than them, um, they require a whole lot of space and time every day. So usually these guys are, they'll stay um, sitting pretty still. They don't move a whole lot when it's dry. And then whenever there's rains, um, usually after a heavy rains, when you'll see them start moving, that's when you'll see them crossing the road. And car strikes is a big, affects them, affects them a lot. And so if you see one crossing the road, always put them on the side of the road that they were headed towards because they're headed that way for a reason and they're probably not going to change their mind. But moving a box turtle out of the road, if you can do so safely, um, is a huge help because their um, shell, you know, if they get cracked, that's really going to affect them pretty badly. It's part of their bones. It's connected to their spine, so they can't take off their shell. So if you see it busted open, um, they're, in, they're in bad shape. She says, no, I don't want my vegetables. I want the meat. So do they have teeth? Oakley asks, do they have teeth? So they do not. They have beaks. And so they have, you know, the their mouth is, oops, sorry, very sharp. So it's sharp along the edges. Um, and they have a beak up front. Let's see if Tara can show us her beak. So there's her beak that she uses to tear into things. Hers isn't as pronounced as some of them. We give them cuddle bones. So little bones to give them calcium and also it helps keep their beaks naturally trimmed so they don't get overgrown because they, that keeps growing. And so it's important for them to have things to chew on to be able to stay, keep their beaks nice and trimmed. Um, Danu has a little bit more of a pronounced beak right there. Um, and also the coolest thing about a box turtle, I even talk about their cool defense mechanism. So if I can grab Tara again, her plastron is hinged right here. And so she can close this up completely. So she can close herself completely in her shell, which they can't do for the first few years of their life. So when they're really little, they can't do that. But as they get older, and then here's the back of her shell, so it can close up too. So she can completely box herself into her shell, which is why she's called a box turtle. Oh no, turtle down. Oh, look at there, all-terrain vehicle. Perfect. Good as new. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to show you their habitat now. And I'm going to bring Tara because Tara likes to go swimming. We named her Earth, and she likes to go swimming a whole lot. She is usually found in her pool, so we're going to take her back to her enclosure, and we'll give you a little tour of their enclosure. This is their habitat. If you come to the nature center, you can look through the screen and look to see if you can find them. Although a lot of times they're hiding under, we've tried to recreate a deciduous habitat. So um, they like to hide under these logs, hide in the grasses. This is one of their favorite hiding places. We have ferns and natural native plants in here. We have a pawpaw tree. Hopefully when it gets bigger and grows pawpaws on it, they'll have something to snack on. And then this is their pond. It's not a very deep pond, um, but it is a pond. Let's see if Tara can show us. <laughs> In she goes, submerging like a little tank. Little submarine. <laughs> And she's just going to go hide amongst the plants. She blends in really well, doesn't she? She's hard to even see. So we have little ramps for them to get up on both sides of their little pool to make it easy. But you'd be surprised how well they can climb up even a stream bank. 
So she's still underwater. And she comes up for a breath. Very nice. I don't know if she's thinking about getting out. Most of the time she stays in here for extended periods of time because that's just what she likes to do. I would like to stay in the water most of the day if I could, as hot as it is. During the winter time, she's under leaf litter. That's where a lot of box turtles are going to be if you go out into the woods. Sometimes you'll just see the top of their shell above the leaves. All right, does anyone else have any questions for us about eastern box turtles? Tara showing off. <laughs> they are really cool. Hopefully you can come and visit us at the Nature Center and see their habitat. And hopefully look for Tara in her pool. She's usually hiding and sometimes you just see her head sticking out just like it is now. So that's what to look for. And you can find her in here. The others are probably going to be hiding out under logs. They go for swims too, but not as much as um, Tara. Here's the other ones going under the log. Happy to be back home. And so this is a pretty big space that we've got for them so that they can roam. They don't really like to be inside of a, a fish tank or something like that. Like I've seen some people have them in. They like to be able to have a diverse habitat and be able to stretch their legs and, and roam. All right, so that is all for today. Remember to enter the contest if you want to win the gift basket. Uh, leave any questions that you might have in the comments about Eastern Box Turtles or the contest. And we're going to see you next Friday. And uh, make sure that you like this and please share to your page so that your friends can know about our live naturalist chats. Thanks so much. See you next week.